Hey guys, let's take a look at polynomials very quickly here. Just You don't need to write this down, but just be aware of it. A polynomial is an algebraic expression, which means it's not, we're not talking about an equation. It's just an expression with a couple of stuff slapped together. A polynomial has to have coefficients that are real numbers. In other words, 2x, negative 5z, stuff like that that you will find on a number line. Later on in the year, we'll get into uh, imaginary numbers, but not right now. Positive whole number exponents. In other words, it has to be 5x squared. Uh, 8z to the 10th, and so on. That's a polynomial. It could have uh, a monomial will be something like, like here's a monomial, monomial, 3x. A binomial, let's go 3x plus 2. A trinomial, you know, 3x plus 2 minus 7y to the 8th, or something like that. Um, let's take a look at a couple of a couple things on these. This, you should know this uh, term degree. The degree is the number uh, of the the number value of the highest exponent in that polynomial so in other words this one here uh well no, let's do this one the degree of this one is one because there's a one there if this were th this binomial were that the do let's say it's 2x here oops now that make that a 2z how about a 2z 2z to the 53rd power the degree would be 53. this one the degree would be Eight, right? Okay, good enough. All right, if you have a polynomial that has two unknowns, two unknowns, it's an, it's an equation, not just a, you know, an expression. The graph of a first degree polynomial with two un unknowns. In other words, it would look like this. Let's say 2x minus 5y equals 7. That's a first degree polynomial. In other words, the highest exponent value is 1. Two unknowns, there's one of the unknowns, there's a second unknown. That is going to be, if you were to graph that, that's going to be a line, a line. And uh, lines were kind of a mystery to me when I was in high school back in the 1700s. And uh, mostly because they hadn't invented lines yet. No, I mean, I kind of understand it a lot better now and I'll show you some tricks about this. To graph a line, if you want to write this down, go right ahead and do it. To graph a line, number one, solve for a y. You're going to be given an equation with an x and a y and another number in it. You need to solve for a y. In other words, stick y all the way by itself, positive one y on the left side of the equation. Everything else goes on the right side of the equation. The second thing is find values for x and y. In other words, you can just stick in something for x and then see what you get for y. Plot that as a point. Okay, for example. Let's say you have 2x plus 3y equals 6. By the way, you do need graph paper at this point. So if you don't have any, go online and print yourself up some free graph paper uh, or buy some. Um, anyway, offer to do the dishes for two, two or three weeks in a row. And please, Mom, give me some graph paper. Tar the roof or whatever you want. Okay, well, let's follow the directions here. We're going to graph this. We're going to go first, solve for y. Second, find values for x and y. We're going to plot them. <coughs> let's solve for y. So let's first off, let's get the x out of there. Let's move it over to the right. That gives us negative 2x plus 6. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to graph, excuse me, we're going to divide by 3. There's my y. There's my number in front of the x. And there is my equation. Now, pretty soon, we're going to be able to look at this equation and see in our minds exactly what it looks like and not have to do this. But just for right now, let's plot a few points. Okay. Let's do an x and a y. You only always do three, just to kind of prove that you're right in case you goofed up one of them. All right, x, I mean, zero is the easiest thing. If you have a fraction with a three on the bottom, go ahead and choose some multiple of three for the other ones, unless you want to be graphing fractions. Blech. I think it makes my stomach hurt thinking about that. Okay, so if x is zero, uh, then negative two thirds times zero is zero, plus two is two. So here's one of your points, zero over and then two up, there's your first point. If x is three, then negative two thirds of three will just be negative two, right? Plus two, that'll be a zero. So your x is three, one, two, three, and then there we go. <clears throat> now our third point, if x is six, what's negative two thirds of six? And the answer is negative four. Well, negative four is that part, plus two is negative two. So six over, one, two, three, four, five, six, then down two, and boom, there's your nice straight line. 
the best I could. And there's your line. That's all you need to do. All right, let's go ahead and graph this one. Same exact method. We're going to solve for y, which means we take our 2y and leave it on the left side. This goes over 4x plus 4. And everything gets divided by 2 because we want a nice, clean, positive 1y. So we get y is equal to 4 divided by 2 plus 4 divided by 2. So there is our equation, all right? So let's go with our little plotting points. If x is 0, that's the easiest thing to do is 0. Let's just do x, you know, 1, 0, 1, and 2. Um, <coughs> x is 0, then, of course, y is 2. So 0 over, and there we go. If x is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2 is 4. So 1 over, 1, 2, 3, 4 is your next point. x is 2, that's going to give you 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And there's our nice line. There you go. Okay, that's graphic linear equation. Now this is uh, the intercept, intercept slope method, which is much easier. We're going to do a couple of these. Um, piece of cake. So you need to be able to look at one of these and just see how it works. Here's how it works. Okay, we're going to go 3y is going to be to the left. We're going to move the 2x over. That's negative 2x and a plus a 6. The last thing we do is to divide by 3 to get this into a 1y. Y is equal to negative 2 and then divide by 3, x, and that's going to be plus 2. Now this might look familiar to you. We did it a couple of slides ago. All right. Here's what we're going to do this time. We will take this entire thing and we all we need to do is two things. Two things, which is this. We will take this 2 and go that number by itself is going to be the y-intercept. The point at which this line crossed, this is the y-axis, don't forget, and that's the x-axis. When you set it up as y equals x plus or minus whatever, this number right there is where the line crosses the y-axis. So we don't have to think about this at all. We look at this number and we go, that is the y-intercept. So we go, that's a 2. Okay, fine. There'll be a point right there. That's a 2. This is our slope. Okay? Now, when I was your age, they confused the just pudding out of people trying to explain slope and all this thing. Slope is basically, if you want to think of it as this, they call it the rise, which means how far up or down it goes, over the run, which means how far left to right it goes. Now, the question is, Oh, wait, do I go up or down? And then do I go left or right to that? Don't worry about it. All you need to look at is this right there. That is a negative slope, which means a negative slope line goes like this. In other words, pretend like this is your, I don't know, you're at a meeting and your boss goes, oh, look at our sales the last three years. That's terrible. Okay, that's negative. You know this line is going to go down instead of going up like that. So make sure what you do with this up and down and then left to right, that's the rise, that's the run, gives you a line that goes down. Okay, so let's just take the two for example. You can go up or down two, doesn't matter. Let's just go up two. One, two. Okay, in other words, you're going to start at this point right here. You're going to start at the y-intercept. You're going to go up two, and again, you could go down two, doesn't matter. Let's go up two. Now, my question to you is, there's my three, right? So I'm, I've gone up two to this point right there. Should I go left three or right three to make sure my line is pointing down, like at that line at the bottom left? I should go left three, right? One, two, three, like this, right? That will give me, you know, two points I can connect and make the line down. Let's say, for example, you didn't choose to go up two. You chose to go down two. Fine. You choose to go down to. Should you go left or right three at this point? And if you go left three, that means your line's right there, and you're you have a line that's going up. Uh-uh, it's a negative. We're going down. So we got to go down two, then go to the right three. And if you notice, it just you know this gives you exactly a nice. Either one of those gives you a nice line. All you need is two points. Just do it, and that's your line. That's all you need to know. This number is where the line crosses the y-axis. This number is the slope. Pay attention. Is it negative or positive? Which tells you, is it going to go up if it's positive? Or is it going to go down if it's negative? 
Okay. Make sure, and that's all you need to know. Then you go up or down how you want here, and then make sure that this over here, you go left, right to make sure it matches whether it's positive or negative. Let's do another one. All right, so pause and copy if you need to. Okay, well, you should look at this graph and go, okay, immediately I can tell. This negative two tells me that my graph has a y-intercept of negative two. There it is. That's my starting point, okay? The other thing it tells me is, oop, negative slope, which means this thing will be pointing down. There's not a fraction here like we had in the last one, the negative two-thirds. So make it into a fraction. Make it a three over a one, okay? So you can just go start from this and go up or down three. It doesn't matter which one. I'll just go down three. One, two, three. Now you tell me, should I go left one or should I go right one to make sure this thing is going down like the negative says it should? I should go right three, I mean right one. There you go. So if I connect those two dots, then that'll give me a line that goes down like this. That's my slope and that nice, perfectly straight line. Okay. That's how you graph. That's it. All right. How about another one? Pause and copy if you need to. Okie doke. Let's take a look. Well, we're going to have to divide by 2 first, right? So I have a y is equal to negative 4 divided by 2 and 2 divided by 2. That's my equation right there. We can tell two things. What's that tell us? It tells us that our y-intercept is right here at positive 1, right? There you go. This tells us that it's a negative slope and it goes, points down. So don't even worry about the negative other than making sure you know, okay, I'm gonna, it's going to go down. So you can write a, qua uh, excuse me, a, a fraction of the two to make this. Okay, and don't forget, this is up and down. This is left to right. So I don't know. Let's just go up to What the heck? One, two, up, right? Now, should I go left one or right one? I should go left one, right? Because if I do that, that gives me a line, if you connect the dots, that goes down. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Okay, there's another one. Now this is kind of wonky. What in the world? That negative y looks ugly, doesn't it? Okay, we're going to have to, in other words, this is the same thing as negative 1y. We don't want no negative 1y. We want a positive 1. So we're going to have to divide by negative 1 by negative 1 by negative 1. y is equal to negative 2 over 1 x. Negative 5 divided by negative 1 is positive 5. So immediately you can visualize the positive top 5 tells you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yoop, there we go. This tells you it's going to be pointing down. You can ignore that now. Now that you know it's pointing down, ignore it. Make yourself a fraction, 2 over 1. Okay, well, let's just go down 2. I don't care. I'll see 1, 2, down, and then it'll have to be to the right one so we can connect those two. So we can connect those two dots that don't exist now. There they go. Okay. Uh, we have to kind of make the make a nice big dot there so it connects right. Okay. There we go. That's it. Just make sure you can look at a, an equation. You should be able to look at this equation. Let's say somebody says to you, y is equal to 5 thirds x minus 8. You should look at this and go, ah, let's see. That's going to be down here. That's the y-intercept. And then I'm going to go up or down 5. And then I'm going to see whether I go left or right three. Oh, I know it's pointing this way because it's a positive five thirds. That's all you need to know. All right. Okay. Let's try A. Pause it and try A. Give it a whirl. Okay. That's, I guess there isn't any A. It's just the only one, right? So let's solve for a, solve for Y. So I'm putting the four Y on the left. It's already there. I'm ewing and that three X over. That's going to be negative three X plus 12. Okay, I'm dividing the whole thing by 4, so that gives me a y, that gives me a negative 3 fourths x, and then 12 divided by 4 is 3. All right, there's your nice equation. Now, again, without even thinking, you know that thing is going to go across the y-axis at 1, 2, 3, and there she blows. Okay, the negative tells you that the line is going like this. Okay, not like this. All right, so don't even worry about the negative anymore. Just go up or down three, whatever you choose. I don't know, let's just go up. One, two, three up. Now, don't forget to start right here at that y-intercept. One, two, three up, 
and I would want to go four to the right, right? Because it would give me a nice positive line. I'm going to have to go four to the left. One, two, three, four, and there you go. That's that uh, right there, and then there you go. There's your line, and everybody's happy, okay? All right, we did it. See you guys next time. Have a great day.